Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Special Hobby. So it comes in 170 second scale and it copies A20A or DB7C, it's Havoc or Boston and boxing is named as the early gunships. So this is a commercial sample and it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you will see in this video review. So we are going to open it together and check what is actually supplied inside and why it might be an interesting build in a small 170 second scale so this is a twin engine aircraft obviously we have really nice box art here and you can check the box size in comparison with my hand it's I would say typical size for a uh, special hobby kits in 170 second scale and this is a top opening box that's why we do not have anything on the bottom but we have some information on the side that it's a special edition actually limited edition as it's written here and of course it's made in Czech Republic here we have some safety devices and QR code. So as I said it's a top opening box and here is what we have inside. So all frames are packed into one plastic bag even the resin parts and decal sheet is packed together. Here on the bottom we have assembly manual so we will open all this stuff and check what is actually supplied for this kit. So just give me a second. In the meantime, I would like to remind you that you can support us financially. We have special support DSV button on our website or you can join YouTube membership which actually offers you various interesting benefits. Here is the button, join, and you can choose out of three possible options. One of them gives you a free kit of your choice every month. And in my opinion, it's really interesting option for these modellers who would like to get something unusual into their collection or they just enjoy getting a new kit every month and choose their new kit by themselves. Okay, so here we start with the first sprue. It's actually the clear sprue and it was packed into the separate plastic bag. So we zoom in a bit and here you can see canopy parts. No section is molded as a single piece part, so it's really cool. But there are no masks or masking templates included into this kit. It's traditional, let's say, feature for a special hobby. So that's why you have to cut everything by your own hands or maybe get some aftermarket set which will actually help you to get the proper paint finish. I think there will be some aftermarket upgrades, so we will see them in the close feature. And next we have another plastic bag, this time with decals. It's not written where these decals come from, but printing quality looks quite okay, so I don't think you will have any issues. I'm not sure how many marking options are inside, we will have to check the assembly manual. But here is the decal sheet, maybe we can close the camera a bit and now you can see that all decals are completely fine. There are no decals for the cockpit, surprisingly, so definitely you have to get some aftermarket PE in order to get a proper cockpit in your model and with such large clear section in the nose area you will have to upgrade it somehow or maybe even just the instrument panel because otherwise it will look strange to have an empty spot in this area. Next I need scissors because we have the sealed plastic bag here. It comes with resin parts. I'm not sure why it is sealed so it could have been a resealable plastic bag but they decided to do it this way so I can't do anything about this and I just have to cut through. So here we have resin parts for the engine cooling and from what I can see one of the engine cooling parts broke off the engine support, actually resin support, that's really surprising, let's remove the uh, decal sheet and here you can see the broken off part, let's zoom in and here you can see how it should look like if it would be okay. Here is another broken piece from this section and next we also have another part for this aircraft. But all these resin parts look completely okay. It's really cool to get the front cooling section as a one piece parts but I wonder how to solve this broken off part issue here. Maybe it would be possible to feel it somehow. And by the way here we have machine gun barrels which are also made out of resin and again they are slightly bent. I'm not sure why it was decided to make them out of resin. It would be way better to have them out of metal. Of course it would influence the price 
but it will give the better appearance in my opinion. Next we start with plastic parts. So here is the first grey plastic sprue. Let's zoom out a bit and open the camera maybe. Okay, so here we have two fuselage halves. As you remember, nose section is separate, so that's why there is no area um, for the nose. And tail fin is pre-molded. We have also rudder pre-molded here. You can also notice some cockpit parts here and there. And now we can zoom in so that you can check what is actually pre-molded on this part. So we have recessed panel lines. They look quite deep, so you want to use them under the surface of the primer and paint. Here you can see tail wings. Here is another one. So each tail wing should be glued out of two halves. In the middle, as I said, we have cockpit elements. So instrument panel and cockpit four and pilot seat as well. And here we have another fuselage half again with the recessed panel lines. Okay, let's flip it over. Inside we have guiding elements for interior parts and also for the fuselage halves. But as far as you can see, there are only several alignment pins here and there, but still they will be helpful because they will get you the right alignment between these parts. So maybe it will make it easier to assemble the right aircraft. Next we continue with wing parts. So each side should be glued out of two halves. We can zoom in again and you can notice that ailerons and flaps are pre-molded. We have recessed panel lines. We can zoom in even more so that you can check these parts closer. Here is one half, here is another one, here is the top area. Actually, that's the bottom area if I'm not wrong. Or maybe it's top. We will have to check the assembly manual definitely. I think that's the top. And then on the bottom or inside we have some guiding pins which will help you with alignment again. And don't worry about these push marks, they won't be visible and you won't have to uh, remove them completely because it will actually, no, it won't influence the overall fitment. So there is no need to do some extra work. Okay, next we continue with engine gondolas parts. This come on the third plastic sprue. So here you can see, so we have actually the front cooling parts molded out of plastic. Maybe it would be possible to use them, but as far as I remember, today's version has slightly different cooling, so that's why it is supplied as a resin part. We can check. Yeah, so there are a few things different from plastic part. Well, you have what we have. And here we zoom in again so that you can see, for example, this one piece propeller. We also have engine parts. Next, we continue with some inserts which will be actually supporting engine in place. Next, we continue with some parts for another engine gondola. So basically, they mirror each other because it's a twin engine aircraft. Obviously, you'll get a two, let's say, double set of each part. And here you can check what we have inside. So each gondola also has guiding pins and it will make it easier to assemble these gondolas together. Next we continue with another sprue and from what I can see here these are mostly interior parts so here you can check it. Let's place it like this. And molding quality is still good. I'm not sure why we get another engine gondola here. Maybe it will be used for some particular version, but still molding quality is as nice as on the previous frames. We can zoom in, open the camera so that it will be lighter. And here you can check everything closer. So I don't think you have any issues with separating these parts. And as you can see, there is no flash or any other possible molding damage. So it's just a matter of careful assembly and you will be good to go. So we zoom out again. And the last gray plastic sprue is dedicated to the here to various external elements such as engine gear and also some parts for the cockpit from what I can see. So again, we zoom into this small frame here. Let's check it here. And you can notice that we have some parts for the fuselage. That's actually the nose area. But as far as I remember, this particular version we will not be using these parts. We will see in assembly manual. 
Now next we continue with landing gear, so landing gear legs and wheels, each wheel should be glued out of two halves, then we continue with some cockpit elements again, nose, landing gear, leg and wheel, and here we have another uh, wheel pair of half parts which will be assembled into main landing gear wheels. Obviously I would recommend to replace them with a resin replacement which will make it easier to get the right, I would say, appearance on your aircraft and of course it will be a good upgrade for the whole model and doesn't matter that this kit comes in 172nd scale, still it deserves some decent resin parts. So here we have assembly manual, it comes in form of a typical special hobby brochure, we have short history note on the first page. Next we continue with the parts map here, so note that some parts won't be used because they are not suitable for today's version. We start with assembly of the cockpit. And as you can see, color mimics actual paint shade, which you have to use for the cockpit. So it's really handy so that you can understand what you have to use for this or that part. Next, we continue. So there are uh, two P upgrades which can actually help you to detail the cockpit even more. And I would recommend to get them because even in such small scale it will be visible. So if you would like to get a bit more realistic appearance on your aircraft, definitely invest into this upgrade. Next, we continue with wing ports. We install tail wings as well. So as you can see, fuselage halves are already joined. Next, we work on the engine gondolas. And as you can see, resin parts will be actually handy for B, C, D and E camouflages, so basically almost for all. On the A version we will be using the plastic part. And here we continue with landing gears. Next we install this frontal section of the engine gondola and also lower section from the bottom. And next we install landing gear wheels, canopy parts, and what is next? So here we have first two marking options and these two come in a typical olive drop color so I would say nothing special unless you know some back history behind this aircraft. These two are a bit more interesting because of the nose art and also here we have a uh, um, metal covered aircraft with a red rudder so it might be a good option to choose and this one is even more unusual because it comes in this camouflage i guess it is from some different country let me read it so that i can tell you where it comes from Yeah, it's Australian Air Forces so that's why it comes in such interesting marking options um, in my opinion that's a uh, interesting choice for this model who would like to get something different in 170 second scale. So let's flip it over and that's all for this video review. As I said this kit should be already available on official special hobby website so if you would like to get one just go there and order it together with some upgrades. They should be available there too. Of course I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit here in the comment section below. If you like this video don't forget to press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye!